and there's a verse in the Quran which many of the Muslims they misunderstand. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter number four, verse number 144, where Allah says, Ya ayyuhallazina amanu, O you who believe, take not for awliya the unbelievers in preference to the believers. And many of the translations, they translate the Arabic word awliya as friends. So the translation reads that, O you who believe, do not take for friends unbelievers in preference to believers. Which I feel it's a wrong translation. The correct translation is the word awliya should be translated as someone who's a protector. So the right translation is that Ya ayyuhallazin amanu, O you who believe, do not take for protectors unbelievers in preference to believers. Do not take for protectors non-Muslims in preference to Muslims. And the same message is repeated in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 57 and 58. That, O you who believe, do not take for friends and protectors those who make a mockery of religion or take it as a sport. That means all those non-Muslims who take your deen as a mockery or as a sport do not keep friendship with them, nor go to them for protection. These verses of the Quran are very clear. But otherwise, keeping acquaintanceship with a non-Muslim, keeping normal friendship with a non-Muslim is no problem at all. Under normal circumstances, we should treat the non-Muslims with justice and kindness. In fact, I say we should go a step further so that they're impressed with our religion, they're impressed with our deen. And you can find several examples in the life history of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Several. You can give a talk only on giving examples how the Prophet dealt with the non-Muslims. And many of us are aware of that incidence where a non-Muslim, he enters the mosque of the Prophet and he urinates. The Sahabas are irritated. They want to teach the non-Muslim a lesson, but the Prophet, he stops them. And he says, be calm. Get some water and wash the floor. That's it. We know of the famous incidents. Whenever Prophet Muhammad used to walk, there was a non-Muslim lady who used to throw dirt on the Prophet every day. Whenever he used to walk, the non-Muslim lady used to throw dirt. One day, when the Prophet walks below the house of that non-Muslim lady, no dirt falls on him. So he's surprised. He goes to a house to find out why was no dirt thrown today. And he realizes that she was sick and he prays for a shifa. And that non-Muslim lady, she's so impressed with the Prophet that she accepts Islam. We have the example in the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad that there was a Jew by the name of Zaid. The Prophet had borrowed some money from him. But before the time was due, that Jew, he comes to the Prophet and he demands for the money back. And he's rude. He speaks rudely to the Prophet that give my money back. And the time was not yet up. Hadat Umar he gets angry and he says, Oh, enemy of God, had it not been for the treaty between the Muslims and the Jews, I would have chopped off your head for speaking to the Prophet like that. Hazrat Umar we know that he was a man of justice. He gets irritated. How could someone speak to the Prophet of Allah like that? The Prophet immediately intervenes and he tells Hazrat Umar that be calm. And he tells Hazrat Umar that give this Jew his money back and add to it the amount of 20 gallons because you frightened him. Because Hazrat Umar frightened him, the man did not have the right to ask the money because the time wasn't yet up. The time wasn't due. Yet because Hazrat Umar he frightened that non-Muslim, the Prophet said, besides giving the money back to him, add 20 gallons worth because he had frightened the Jew. And Alhamdulillah, the Jew is impressed with the behavior of the Prophet and he accepts Islam. 
So generally, the Muslims should be kind and just to the non-Muslims. We have to be the right example so that they'll realize we are the followers of the religion of peace. A Muslim is a person who acquires peace by submitting his will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as far as general dealing is concerned, we have to be kind and just. But there is a caution which I always mention in my talk whenever I'm dealing with this topic that keeping non-Muslim friends is no problem as long as you are having an influence on that non-Muslim. If it's the vice versa, then there is a danger. If the non-Muslim friend is having a greater influence on you, then there is a problem. Because whenever there is a relationship between two human beings, and when you keep on meeting very often, no one can tell me that nothing happens. Either you are influencing him or he's influencing you. You can't say that nothing is happening. So if you are having influence on him, Alhamdulillah, summa alhamdulillah, continue the relationship so that he understands the deen al haq, the religion of Islam better. But if he's having an influence on you, then be careful. You may follow his path, which may be wrong. So here, if it's a relationship in which your deen is in danger, then I feel you have to discontinue that relationship. You have to be careful. The Quran is very clear. As far as protection is concerned, if there are two options, believer and unbeliever, a believer is preferable at all times. The verse says, do not take unbelievers for protectors in preference to believers. So as far as your deen is not in danger, and if you are having an influence on the non-Muslim, Alhamdulillah. And I, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have hundreds of non-Muslim friends. MashaAllah, hundreds, Hindus, Christians, many. And almost all that I know, they respect me, MashaAllah. They know that I'm a Dai, I speak about the religion. Yet, Alhamdulillah, they respect me. So as long as you are having influence on them, it's very good.